You're listening to More Than Steps, the podcast where we geek out on how belly dance works, one coffee run at a time. I'm your hostess, Nadira Jamal. When I was an intermediate student, my teacher started including performance critiques in class. My friend Lilia was a firecracker, and her first piece was really exciting. Her technique and musicality were excellent, and she connected with each of us as she danced. And yet something wasn't quite as good as it could be. I couldn't put my finger on what it was, but when it was our classmate Heather's turn to give feedback, she asked Lilia what was going on in her head. And Lilia responded, I think of myself as a Labrador puppy running around excitedly to greet everyone. And Heather said, oh, I definitely see the puppy, and I like the puppy, but your dancing needs more kitty. Most belly dance training puts a lot of focus on the puppy. When we first start working on performance skills and expression, we're usually trying to come out of our shells. So some of the most common advice that we get is to look up, make eye contact, smile, and visit with the audience. And those are all incredibly important skills. But we need more than just that puppy energy. We need some kitty as well. So why is that? Well, the friendly, high-energy Labrador puppy is a wonderful quality to have in your dance. But when we overdo it, we tire the audience out, or worse, give the impression that we're begging for their attention. And that makes the audience uncomfortable. Bringing some kitty into your dance balances that friendliness with confidence, because kitties do not beg. So how do you get more kitty into your dance? Well, there are a lot of different ways, but if you observe a cat, you'll notice two important things that they do. One is that they play hard to get. If you can, observe a cat. And you'll notice that they don't jump up and slobber on everyone. They walk around the edge of the room, checking you out, deciding whether or not and when to pay attention to you. And they take their sweet time doing it. And so when they do decide to pay attention to you, you feel special. So to try to bring this into your dancing, try breaking eye contact for a time. Turn your back briefly on the audience or look away briefly. But don't lock them out. Catch somebody looking at you. Approve of their attention. Bask in it like a cat basks in the sunshine. You can think at them, yes, I am awesome. I'm so proud of you for realizing it. You may worship me now. Or if that doesn't resonate with you, another statement you can have in mind is, I have a secret and I'm not gonna tell you what it is. Another kitty technique is to make everything precious. Cats do everything with intention. Every step they take, every look of the paw, is done as if it is the most important thing in the world. So focus on the sensation of each movement and milk it for as much enjoyment as you can get out of it. Now, every animal has its attractions and every animal has its downsides. So when you bring that kitty energy, watch out for two big gotchas. One is don't fake it. This is not the time to put on your sultry face or your haughty face. The kitty energy is about confidence, not hutcher, and sensuality, not sultriness. Besides, cats don't put on faces. Why would they need to? They're awesome and they know it. The second gotcha is that it's critical that you do not use the kitty energy to push the audience away. Sometimes when dancers try to channel the kitty, they take it too far and end up shutting out the audience instead. That projects insecurity, not confidence. Remember, cats do not beg for attention, but they do welcome it, just as long as it's on their own terms. So the best way to prevent shutting the audience out is to stay mindful of what your mouth is doing. If you're pursing your lips and never smiling, you're probably pushing people away. So separate your teeth and ideally also your lips and you'll open up your entire expression. That doesn't mean that you have to smile in every moment, but even your non-smiling expressions should be open and relaxed. Now, if you're thinking, but I really wanna be friendly and interactive, Remember, cats are interactive. They just draw you in instead of jumping up and licking your face. And don't worry, there is plenty of room in your dance for the Labrador puppy as well. Our goal here is to get you comfortable with the kitty energy so you can mix it up. We're not trying to banish the puppy.
So let's summarize what we've talked about. High energy interactive dancing is wonderful, but overdoing it makes the audience uncomfortable. Bringing some kitty to your dance balances it by giving it confidence and focus. So try playing hard to get with your audience and moving with intention. But avoid making faces in hauteur, that is not kitty. And most definitely do not close your teeth. Keep your open expression going. And when you're comfortable with the kitty energy, you can mix kitty and puppy to find your ideal mix for your personality, your dance style, or your mood in the moment. A good next step is to pick out a song you like, put it on, and dance to it like a Labrador puppy. Then dance to it like a kitty, and then try to find a balance between the two. You may even find that some points in the music call more for one energy than for another. And if you feel like you've already got plenty of kitty in your dance, stay tuned. In an upcoming episode, we'll talk about how to cultivate puppy energy. And if you want help cultivating expressiveness on stage, check out my video, Expression in Improv. You can find that at bellydancegeek.com slash store. Thanks for listening. For more geektacular resources, visit bellydancegeek.com.